The send command is useful for doing string replacements in text files or streams. For example, in this text file, I've copied a bunch of text from the Wikipedia article on the word color. Using grep, we can see all instances of the word color in this file that are spelled without a U. For this example, let's use the sed command to replace all instances of the word color. We'll replace all instances of the American spelling with the British spelling that uses a U. To do this, let's start by piping the contents of this file into sed. We'll use this sed command to define the replacement rule. We want to replace all instances of the word C-O-L-O-R with the word C-O-L-O-U-R. Now you can see in several places that the spelling of the word color has been replaced with the version that uses a U, but it hasn't been replaced everywhere. This is because the sed command will only run this replacement rule for the first match that it finds on each line. To run the replacement multiple times on every line, add the G flag for global. Now you can see that the spelling has been replaced in multiple places on each line. Let's filter this through grep to highlight all the replaced words. Now let's use grep to see if we missed any instances of the previous spelling. Okay, it doesn't find any instances of lowercase c-o-l-o-r. Let's do a case insensitive search. So it looks like our replacement rule missed two instances of the old spellings. This is because they use a capital C. We can update our replacement rule to make it case insensitive by adding the I flag. Using the case insensitive replacement doesn't preserve capital letters, but at least this gets us very close to our final goal and demonstrates the usefulness of the sed command. For this example, we use the cat command to output the contents of the file color.txt to the terminal. This was piped into the sed command and then printed immediately to the terminal without being saved. We can change this so that sed operates directly on the file and saves its changes immediately using the dash i flag. In this case, we need to specify the file. Now when we run the command, we don't see any output but the contents of the file has been changed. Let's do another example to demonstrate how the sed command can be useful. For this example, we have a Python script called emails.py. Let's assume that the Python script emails.py does some sort of processing task to retrieve thousands of names and emails. It then prints out the names and emails in a format like this. But for our purposes, we can't work with the information directly like this. We want to extract only the email addresses and have them each printed individually on a line by themselves. Using the sed command is a great way to solve this problem quickly. We can pipe the output of this script directly into sed and then use a replacement rule to get rid of whatever comes before and after the email address. Now let's write out a replacement rule. For simple replacement rules that happen on all lines of the file, every replacement rule can just start with s. You can write forward slash to begin writing the regular expression that you're searching for. In our case, everything that we want to replace starts with a double quote. So we'll start with a double quote. The next part to match is everything inside of these double quotes. We'll use a character class to say anything that is not a double quote, repeated zero or more times using the star, followed by a double quote. So this part of the regular expression should match everything here, everything here, everything here, and so on. In our case, this is always followed by a comma, and the comma is always followed by at least one space. So we can use slash s for a space, and we don't know how many times the space will happen, so we'll just use star for zero or more. And the space is always followed by the double quote that starts the email address. So we'll type double quote. So this part of the regular expression should match everything here, everything here, everything here, and so on. So we finished writing what we want to search for, and now we can separate this from what we are going to replace it with, with a forward slash. And in our case, we want to replace it with nothing. So we can just write another forward slash to end the replacement rule. And we don't need to use G because this only appears one time on every line. So let's go ahead and try this. All right, that worked. It deleted the first part that we don't want. Now all we need to do is get rid of the last double quote. 
We can do this by piping our output into yet another sed command. This time our replacement rule is much simpler. Simply replace a double quote with nothing. And here we have the final desired output. Originally our output looked like this, and now it looks like this. So it's now much easier to work with in the format that we expect. Let's do one final example to show how the sed command can be useful. The file at proc meminfo contains useful information and statistics about the memory on your system. Let's assume that our goal is to transform this output so that it's more easy to work with for other programs. Specifically, we want to transform this output so that it's accessible as a JSON object. Anything that comes before the colon will be a key in the JSON object, and the number along with the units will become a value in the JSON object. Using some fairly simple rules, we can do this fairly quickly in SED. To start off with, let's add double quotes around whatever comes before the colon to make it a key in our JSON object. We'll start by writing a character class that matches all of the characters that are found in any of the keys. This includes lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, an underscore, number digits, and in a couple cases, parentheses. Each of the keys will be composed of one of these characters repeated one or more times. The syntax for one or more in this flavor of regular expressions is slash plus. In order to test our pattern to see if it matches things correctly, let's just delete this part instead of doing anything with it. As you can see, we've successfully matched all the keys. Now let's use a regular expression feature called capture groups. The syntax for this in regular expressions requires surrounding the part of the pattern you want to match in parentheses. In this particular flavor of regular expressions, the parentheses need to be escaped. In our replacement rule, we can use backslash one to refer to this part of the regular expression. Since our goal is to surround this part with double quotes, we can write double quotes around the slash one in the replacement rule. Let's try this to see what it does. Look at that, all of our keys have been surrounded by double quotes. We're getting closer, now we just need to update the value part of each line so that it's accessible as a JSON object. Let's do this by piping our output into a second set command. In this case, we can start by matching the colon, followed by matching any number of spaces, followed by matching one or more numbers. Then to keep our regex simple, we'll just match any character any number of times. Now we can use a forward slash because we're finished writing our search pattern and to test our pattern out, let's replace this with nothing. So it looks like we're correctly matching the value part of each line. Let's finish writing our replacement rule. In this case, we want to use double quotes around a back reference again, but we have to go back to our search regex and specify what part of the regex we want to capture. So we'll write a parentheses just before the numbers and a closing parentheses just after the any characters and as we did before, we need to backslash these parentheses. And let's try this. Okay, that's almost there, but we're missing a colon and a comma on each line to make this valid JSON. We can type a comma just after the double quote in the second replacement rule. So there's our commas. And let's add back in the colon. All right, that's pretty close. Now, looking at this output, this is very, very close to being a valid piece of JSON. We can take the output that we've got so far and pipe it into a file called out.json. At this point, we can just manually edit the file to make it valid JSON. All we need is a single curly brace at the start and a curly brace at the end and to delete this extra comma. And look at that, we now have a valid JSON object that comes from the output of this Linux command. Here's a simple Python script that will help us test to see if our JSON is formatted correctly. It will open the file out.json, deserialize the JSON, and then iterate over all keys in the JSON object, printing each key value pair. Let's test this out. Look at that, it looks like it worked. As you can see, the sed command is great for doing quick string replacements on text files or streams. These examples only scratch the surface of what sed is capable of, but hopefully by now you're interested enough to research this tool further.